Mr. President, are you going to uh, build more schools uh, if you get some USA? Is there a need for more schools? Yes. 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 This is my end because the and uh, uh, I'm mostly uh, uh, an intellectual than a, than a soldier. Because I, I build up in a civil school, and I have a big program for, for the mass, for the whole masses, for the whole nation. You call that the program of alphabetization and uh, ONEC. Well, I think one of the biggest problems in the past has been that the United States has had quite a bit to, of control of the monies which they've had, but they've had the wrong men utilizing this. For instance, the dam, as you know, uh, cost almost four times what it was supposed to cost, the dam at Palik, and it doesn't even have an electric light socket in it. It was supposed to provide electricity for the island. Duvalier, I understand, is now asking for the United States to give him aid and to spend it directly on the public works projects and on the people. While Papa Doc angles for Uncle Sam's favor and his charity, a diverse group of Haitian exiles is working from New York, Miami, Puerto Rico, and points throughout Latin America to overthrow the Duvalier regime. But even far from home, they fear the vengeance of the man they would like to destroy. Most will not allow themselves to be identified. They are in the main a disorganized group of former politicians with little in common except hatred for the frail man in black who now rules Haiti. But each morning from a powerful shortwave transmitter in New York, exiles beam a dose of anti-Duvalier propaganda to their countrymen back home. The impact of their efforts is anyone's guess. Here's a sample translation. Ici, la voix de l'Union Haitienne Internationale. La voix This is la the voice of the Haitian International Union, the voice of the resistance, broadcasting in Creole and in French. This broadcast is sponsored by the Haitian Coalition, a group represented in all continents and which is the hope of the people of Haiti. Dictator Duvalier has made it clear that he is for life, yet... He says he has a democracy. He wants all exiles and expatriates back to put Haiti on its feet again. The Haitian coalition wants deeds, not words. If Mr. Duvalier has received a message of conciliation from his voodoo gods, he should first free all political prisoners who are rotting away in his jail. Two, restore Haitian citizenship to the more than 50 exiles an expatriate whose citizenship he has illegally revoked. Three, restore the properties of these same exiles whose homes, businesses, land, he has nationalized a la Castro. Four, invite the Human Rights Commission of the Organization of American States to come to Haiti right away. Invite also the International Commission of Jurists to come to Haiti to give legal aid to prisoners and to the government. Uh, Haitian refugees in Miami and New York and Puerto Rico who you consider a threat to your government? If they want to overthrow my government, they can't. Would you like to see them come home? I said that the, this soil belongs to every Haitian. And they have one father on. This father on is Haiti. Would you grant them an amnesty if they came back? Would they be safe to come back? I say I do not send every anyone abroad. They went abroad himself. Of course, Haiti is not a democracy in any rational sense. It never has been. 
Historically, Haiti has been ruled from the top down by a privileged class of mulattoes who live on the cool, clean mountaintops surrounding Port-au-Prince. The light-skinned 5% live in traditional luxury, high above the smell and the misery of the city slums. When Francois Duvalier, the middle-class Negro, came to power, it represented a revolution in Haitian politics. Upper-class mulattoes surrendered power to a new class of Negro politicians. Some also lost property through government confiscation. All feel the pinch of a shrinking economy. But if the mulattoes have misgivings, they do not speak them aloud. When asked about the future, they shrug and say, we are waiting to see what happens. Many feel that without Papa Doc, Haiti would become another Dominican Republic. One light-skinned Haitian businessman explained his support of Duvalier as a choice between chaos now and chaos later. They hang on and hope that with his absolute control firmly established, Duvalier will loosen his grip and begin the job of building the country. But to do this, Haiti's president for life needs outside help. If he doesn't get it soon, some observers predict Papa Doc's overthrow. And they say the revolt, if it happens, will come not from the oppressed Haitian masses at the bottom of the mountain, but the privileged minority at the top. Some final thoughts on Haiti's King of the Mountain in a moment. For 160 years, Haiti has struggled under one dictatorship or another. What makes Francois Duvalier unique is his understanding of the Haitian mentality and his ruthless ability to survive. Duvalier now promises to bring a measure of progress to his people if the United States will give him money and moral support, two things he jeopardized several years ago. The country's educated mulattoes, caught between a black majority they fear and a government they can't control, hope that the U.S. will buy them more time by giving the dictator what he wants. But would this be wise in an age of revolution? The Duvalier regime, like that of the late Rafael Trujillo in the neighboring Dominican Republic, is a dead-end street, for a dictator cannot tolerate opposition, and without opposition, there is no established leadership to take command after the dictator is gone. Trujillo's legacy was chaos and bloodshed, and continuing diplomatic crisis for the United States. There's little reason to believe the end result would be any different if we help Papa Doc remain king of the mountain in Haiti. This is Wayne Ferris for Outlook. Good night. You have been watching Haiti's King of the Mountain on Outlook, a weekly presentation of WCKT News. Next Saturday at 6.30, Outlook will present another report of interest to the South Florida community. This program was pre-recorded. WCKT invites your comments.